Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've got questions about formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, our number today, 844-236-6010, and we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to my website's brightsideben.com criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. Of course, if you want to join the Brightside Ben team and start a longevity business, make some money and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program if you're entrepreneurially minded, this is an easy way to start a business. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a nutritional supplement business and help change the world and make money at the same time. You can make as little money as you want or as much money as you want. It all depends on how much time and effort you want to put in. Call 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Bend phone team, 866-735-2470, and they can give you the full scoop, 866-735-2470. And of course, if you're interested in some super high-end, highly active, highly potent skin health products, if you're not satisfied with your skincare and your medicine cabinet is filled with ineffective skincare products, and most people have all kinds of stuff in their medicine cabinet they never use. If you're tired of paying money for products that, you, that don't work and that you're not using, you want to know about our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Skin Health products, including Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, and Truth Balm, and you can find out all about those at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. You can also uh, check out my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. I have, a, I have a personal Facebook page, although I'm thinking of discontinuing it because I never use it. But I also, uh, if you're interested in reaching out to me or connecting with me, head over to The Truth with Ben. Uh, that's my Facebook page for Truth Skin Health products and all things skin, The Truth with Ben. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're talking about the abdominal connective tissue, which connects with the abdominal nerves and ultimately, as we said yesterday, forms a type of brain. And just like all of our, uh, our feelings and our emotions and traumas and joys and, and uh, uh, experiences impact the brain in our head, they also affect the brain in the belly, the belly brain, which regulates our intestine, our digestive system, and links up to the entire connective tissue network. You can think of this belly brain as the central headquarters of the connective tissue. You can think of this belly brain as the central headquarters of the body's brain or of the body's nervous system. The way the brain in our head is the central headquarters of the nervous system, of, of our electrical nervous system, uh, the solar plexus or the belly brain is the headquarters of our connective tissue system. In esoteric teachings, ancient Chinese medicine, ancient Indian medicine, this plexus, which means network, this uh, network or plexus in the belly, the solar plexus or concentration of nerves is referred to as a chakra. You've probably heard of those terms. Technically speaking, the solar plexus is the third 
of the uh, third chakra. There are seven chakras, seven major chakras all together. And the, uh, in ancient Chinese medicine, Indian medicine, esoteric teachings, the solar plexus brain was recognized as a major chakra, uh, the third chakra, which is chakras are just a fancy Indian word that refers to uh, wheels or energy or concentration of energy, if you will. According to this ancient wisdom, it's uh, four, probably 4,000 years old. The first chakra, the lower chakra, uh, first of the seven chakras is about survival of the individual. It's located at the very bottom of our torso, and it's connected to the adrenal glands. The second chakra is our reproductive chakra. It's right, located around the pelvis. Don't be put off by the idea of chakras. These are all linked to hormones. East, east, meets, east meets west at the level of the chakras, which are basically glands, which are the way they used to refer to glands. So don't be put off by the term chakra because all it really means is centers of energy. And in Western medicine, these chakras are all about glands. The first chakra is the adrenal gland. It's about survival of the individual. The second chakra represents the, the reproductive organs or reproductive glands. It's about survival of the species. The fourth chakra represents the heart and the thymus gland, which is about immunity and also obviously about love. The fifth chakra is uh, linked to the throat and the thyroid gland, and it's associated with creativity and communication. The sixth, sixth chakra is in the, head, in the head. It regulates the pituitary glands. It's associated with a spiritual vision, tiny little... The pituitary is awesome, a really awesome gland, which we don't talk about enough. It's considered to be the master gland in the body because it regulates all the other hormones. It's about the size of a pea and it's actually split into two. You actually have two lobes to the pituitary gland. Can you imagine this? The size of a pea, yet it regulates all of the hormones in our body and it's split into two. It's located right, uh, right where, if you, uh, where supposedly the third eye is, right between your brows. It's actually called the brow chakra. If you put your finger right between your eyes and, and imagine your finger is going through to the center of your brain, that's where the pituitary gland is located. The pituitary gland is important not just for uh, the functioning of all the other glands. It's important for the growth of all the other glands as well as organ, uh, the organs of the body as well as sexual development. It's been called the seat of the mind which relates to its, uh, which is about, which um, gives you an indication about its relationship with the seventh chakra, which has been called the seat of the soul by Rene Descartes, the famous French mathematician, I think therefore I am. He called the pineal gland, which is the seventh, uh, the seventh chakra, he called it the seat of the soul, the sixth gland, the sixth chakra or the pituitary gland being the seat of the mind. Didn't mean to digress here, but I think it's kind of interesting how all of the glands are linked up to what have been called historically. Uh, the chakras. In any case, the solar plexus is the third chakra. It regulates digestion. It regulates all the digestive glands, the liver, the intestine, the stomach, and the pancreas. And it is known as the center of individual power. It's where our ego and our personality are concentrated according to this Eastern medicine and according to the understanding of the chakras. It is about the digestive system, which is kind of interesting because of all the problems we have in this country with digestion. I sometimes wonder how how much of that is linked, at least via the chakras, to our problems or our issues around personal power. From a psychological perspective, personal strength and personal power are located in the same area where our solar plexus chakra is. It's kind of interesting. The solar plexus is obviously a fulcrum, it's kind of a center point between our upper body and our lower body, and historically anyway, via the, via the, the wisdom of the chakras, this is where our ego and our pers sense of personal identity is located. Located. As far as medicine goes or as far as health goes, the solar plexus regulates what's called the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system regulates uh, organ, various organ function, unconscious organ functions, the functions of our pancreas, the functions of our liver, constriction and dilation of our blood vessels, pupil size and the uh, uh, pupil dilation and pupil constriction. This is all regulated by the autonomic nervous system and the solar plexus plays a major role in how well this autonomic nervous system works. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. 
844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're talking about here today, if you have comments about anything we're talking about, what do you think about the relationship between the chakras and the glands? The relationship, how do they know these things? How did ancient people know that there was these powerful centers that were glandular and hormonal that were associated with these various areas of the body so significant that they would actually name them chakras, name them wheels of energy? It's kind of fascinating when you think about it. Ancient folks knew some stuff. I don't know how they did, but they sure did know some stuff. They knew about spirituality. They knew about physiology. They knew about architecture. And pretty amazing. Any case, the abdominal fascia represents the solar plexus, the center of the body, the belly brain. If you've ever uh, felt anything in the pit of your stomach or had a knot in your stomach or butterflies in your stomach, this is not just a metaphor. This is literal manifestations of the activity of the belly brain warning us, warning us and letting us know that there's something going on in our lives. And this electrical energy in the belly brain is run through the fascia, the abdominal fascia. And the importance of the abdominal fascia cannot be overstated, even though the medical model does not address the importance of the abdominal fascia. In fact, doesn't even think about it. And this is why we have abdominal surgeries. We have, do you know over 90% of people who have abdominal, sur uh, abdominal surgeries, and that is a lot of different surgeries from gallbladder surgery to female reproductive surgery to prostate surgery to digestive surgeries, 90% or over 90% of people who have abdominal, uh, abdominal surgeries or who have surgical procedures that cut into the abdomen will end up with messed up abdominal fascia permanently. And this is a huge problem and it's an understated problem. Nobody ever thinks about that. And your doctor isn't going to tell you that when he tells you how easy it is to do a gallbladder, uh, to have your gallbladder removed. He'll say, they're not going to mention abdominal adhesions, which is what we call these abdominal disruptions that follow abdominal surgeries. So all kinds of things that can mess up the abdominal fascia, dehydration, malnourishment, injuries, but nothing will jack up your abdominal fascia more than a surgical procedure. All of these will disrupt the flow of energy through the solar plexus and cause all kinds of health havoc that will not be related to the solar plexus. Chronic pain, neuropathies, prostate issues, endometriosis, all of these can be related to abdominal adhesions. Now, over the course of time, even if you don't have, even if you haven't had a surgical procedure done, over the course of time and as we age, adhesions can still form. Nutritional deficiencies can lead to adhesions. Of course, abdominal surgery is the major cause of these abdominal adhesions. And even if you recover, even if you recover normally after a surgical procedure, there's a very good likelihood that you are going to be dealing with abdominal adhesions, and nobody's going to be thinking of this as a very likely cause of your digestive issues your intestinal blockages, your neurological issues, your structural issues, bad backs and sciatica and ruptured discs and further injuries to your legs and to your ankles. All of these can result, can be the result of disruptions in the, or adhesions in the fascia that follow all kinds of things, including surgeries, including female reproductive issues. Endometriosis can be related to abdominal adhesions. Menstrual cramping can be related to abdominal adhesions. Infertility can be related to abdominal abdominal adhesions. Fortunately, there are things we can do to loosen and strengthen the fascia to release adhesions or loosen adhesions and to release contractions. Acupuncture can help. Massage can help. Rolfing can help. Body work can help. Yoga can help. You can actually address your abdominal adhesions yourself by doing abdominal massages or kind of rubbing and feeling for, feeling for adhesions or tightening or scar tissue in the abdominal area. There's a a, a body work, a type of body work called Maya abdominal massage. And this is kind of a gentle uh, external massage of the abdomen that works to soften the muscles and enhance and improve the circulation of blood through the solar plexus. It can help open up the lymphatic system in the solar plexus area. This abdominal massage, this Mayan abdominal massage, and it really lots of different types of abdominal massage are, are pretty, are highly regarded in the world of body work anyway. They're practiced, these kinds of procedures are practiced by midwives, um, traditional healers, indigenous healers. You want to focus, if you're going to do abdominal massage, you're going to be focusing on right 
around the belly button area, around the belly button area. You don't necessarily want to work on the belly button, but around the belly button area, you can kind of do your own self-massage. You can probe a little bit for, for belly knots, and when you find them, you can, uh, you can kind of loosen them up. Make sure you're breathing correctly when you're doing this. Breathing, actually taking deep breaths, can expose the adhesions and make them easier to find. You don't want to ever feel pain. If you've got pain in there, you want to be real careful. And as I say, you want to be a little bit more careful around the belly button area, but certainly around the belly button, you can loosen up your own. You, uh, you can do your own body work to loosen up your, your, uh, your adhesions. So surgical procedures are going to be the number one cause of these abdominal adhesions. And if you're unfortunate, unfortunate enough to have some kind of surgery, the odds are, well, it's, it's pretty much likely that you're going to have abdominal adhesions. As I say, over 90% of abdominal surgeries lead to adhesions, and this is a subject that nobody ever talks about. According to an article published in the World Journal of Surgery in December 2010, post, quote, post-operative adhesions adhesions occur in about 90% of all patients undergoing abdominal surgery and lead to at least one readmission for a third of these patients in the following 10 years. So you've got to have a doctor or a procedure done to correct the first procedure in at least a third of the cases of a third of the patients who have abdominal surgeries. According to this article, quote, the magnitude, this is very important, quote, the magnitude of the problem of post-operative adhesions is underestimated and informed consent is provided inadequately, unquote. In other words, nobody tells us. And nobody recognizes these problems. This is according to the World Journal of Surgery article, December 2010. So... The relationship between health and the body's connective tissue is absolutely, absolutely critical. The connective tissue is fiber, the connective tissue is goo, the fibers are collagen and elastin, and they're all embedded in this jelly matrix. And this jelly matrix, which is technically called the extracellular matrix, is kind of like, has a consistency of wet seaweed. If you ever put water in, uh, if you ever go get dried seaweed, and by the way, dried seaweed is a great health food. You can find that in most most uh, health, store, health food stores or also in Asian markets. If you ever add water to your nori or your uh, whatever kind of seaweed you're using, there's all these different kinds of seaweeds. If you ever add water to it and you see this gooey substance, that's what the extracellular matrix, uh, that's what the extracellular matrix looks like. However, as we get older and as the, uh, the impact of nutritional deficiencies accrue with time, as the impact of dehydration accrues with time, as the impact impact of injury accrues with injuries accrue with time the extracellular matrix becomes fibrotic it becomes mineralized it has more fibers than it does goo and because it's the goo that's responsible for delivering the nutrients and the electricity and the oxygen to the cells as well as detoxification over the course of time fibrosis of the extracellular matrix is not only a cause of illness not only a cause of early demise not only a cause of health uh, health misery but maybe the cause, maybe the major cause of health misery of all kinds is fibrosis of the extracellular matrix, which is a subject we will continue with when we come back from our break. I'm Farmer. Looking for... We are back on the right side, and our board is empty. Now's the time to call in at 844-236-6010 if you have questions about anything we're talking about here today. If you're dealing with any skin health issues or physiologic health issues, if uh, you've had an experience with abdominal adhesions, or if you have any connective tissue problems, neuropathies, back pain, anything like that, or if you just have comment or success story, we'd love to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, you can do it by calling the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or right off the web at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. All right, so one of the ways we age is we become fibrotic. We harden. We get harder with age. We turn to stone, literally. Our bodies turn to stone. Our heart turns to stone. Our kidneys turn to stone. And this is why hydration is so important. This is why keeping your body flexible is so important. This is why yoga can be helpful. Stretching exercises can be helpful as 
as we stretch, we decrease the likelihood of fibrotic connective tissue. As we move our bodies, we keep our connective tissue flexible and labile. Drinking water can also help, making sure we're hydrated. Although I have to tell you, connective tissue water, as we said, is a little bit different than ordinary bulk water, the kind of water that we drink. However, connective tissue water comes from the water we drink. So making sure that you're well hydrated, especially first thing in the morning, can be very helpful for keeping your connective tissue flexible. We will continue talking about this idea of fibrosis tomorrow, particularly as it regards fibrosis of the skin. Just like our bodies age, just like one of the ways our bodies ages, uh, our body ages is becoming fibrotic, one of the ways our skin ages and one of the leading signs or causes of the signs of aging, the signs of skin aging, the wrinkles and the crow's feet and the fine lines and the thinning and the just poorly constructed skin, uh, poor appearance to the skin that occurs as we age has a lot to do with fibrosis of the skin's connective tissue. The skin is 90% connective tissue even though we don't see that. The vast majority of what we look at, the, of what we see when we look at the skin is connective tissue. It's dependent on connective tissue and this connective tissue fibrosis in the skin needs to be addressed dressed if we are going to keep our skin young and beautiful as, and healthy and the only topical products or topical ingredients that will make a wits bit of difference in skin fibrosis is vitamin C and vitamin A. No herbs will do it. No fancy schmancy peptides with maybe the exception. I don't even want to say that. No, there's nothing that will make a difference in skin fibrosis with the exception of vitamin C and from a topical perspective with the exception of vitamin C and vitamin A and skin peels and exfoliation treatments which you can do with alpha hydroxy acids. These are subjects we will be covering tomorrow and in the coming days as we continue talking connective tissue, fascia, and the health of the body, and the beauty and the appearance of the body as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on, we'll get to you in just a moment. A couple stories I want to read. Uh, this one in, is from the European Food Safety Authority. Vitamin B3 may benefit those with Parkinson's disease. How do you like that? I love vitamin B3, which is also known as niacin. Uh, niacin is the pharmaceutical vitamin. And I say that because in the back of pharmacies, you'll find timed release niacin, at least historically. You'll, you will find timed release niacin because of its multiple health benefits. Niacin is one of the, uh, may, it may be the only vitamin, I'm thinking about that. It's certainly, uh, I think it's the only vitamin that the body can actually make. Now, the body can make vitamin A and D, but technically they're not vitamins. That the body can make niacin, and it makes niacin under conditions of niacin deficiency because the stuff is so darn important, particularly for brain health. According to this article, uh, vitamin B3 can benefit people who have Parkinson's disease. This is a study uh, that showed that, uh, quote, vitamin B3 strengthens the uh, uh, the neurology in the brain it increases uh, it increases neurological conduction in the brain it increases according to this article increases the levels of a compound responsible for energy generation and DNA repair in the nervous system in the brain vitamin b3 is important for skin health niacin that is is important for skin health redness of the skin sensitivity to the skin dermatitis is to the skin these can all be the result of niacin deficiency niacin is the most important important vitamin when it comes to controlling cholesterol. In fact, niacin is nature's statin drug. And if you are on a statin drug and you're interested in lowering your cholesterol without medication, you want to be on niacin. But you got to have enough niacin and the downside to high doses of niacin is what is called the niacin flush. You may have experienced the niacin flush. It's an unpleasant redness or unpleasant tingling. There's redness that occurs, burning heat. But if you use a timed release niacin, you can get a high dose of niacin without the niacin flush. And we always kept a couple of bottles of the brand name Nicobid, which was timed release niacin in the back of the pharmacy when I was working in drugstores. Well, you can get timed release niacin from Longevity now. That's one of Dr. Wallach's newest, latest formulations. It's actually about two years old now. Uh, timed release 500 milligrams milligrams of niacin if you're dealing with uh, cholesterol issues, heart health issues, dermatitis, unexplained dermatitis I think that's how you say it, uh, any uh, brain health issues, including social anxiety disorder. And by the way, niacin is very similar to nicotine. 
chemically is very similar to nicotine. So niacin is a great, using niacin supplements is a great way to wean yourself off of cigarettes. If you're addicted to cigarettes or you're addicted to nicotine, you may want to start using a little bit of niacin. In fact, everybody, in my opinion, everybody would benefit from a niacin supplement. Particularly if you're dealing with some kind of health challenge, go with the 500 milligram timed release form. Okay, from the uh, Neurological Institute at Columbia University, migraines more likely for people with celiac disease. Once again, we see the relationship of the gut to the rest of the body. Gut health is the core of the body. This is why the solar plexus is so important. This is why abdominal fascia is so important. Of course, we said that the abdominal fascia regulates at least partially the health of the digestive system, the health of the intestines, if you're dealing with celiac disease. And by the way, did you know that the solar plexus is also known as the celiac plexus. In any case, the celiac, uh, if you're dealing with celiac disease, migraine, headaches are more likely to occur from the uh, uh, Dr. Alexandra, Dr. Alexandra Dimitrova, a neurolog neurology resident at the Neurological Institute of Columbia University. Early research links headaches to gluten problems, Crohn's disease, and colitis. No surprise to anybody listening to this program, but certainly it may come as a surprise to your friends who don't listen to this program or even to your physician who may be helping you with migraine headaches. Migraine headaches need to first primarily be regarded as an issue with the intestine, particularly with food allergies and food intolerances. This is the major link, this is the major reason why people deal with migraines, food allergies and food intolerances. The hormone estrogen is also involved, and we know women get more migraine headaches than men, because estrogen metabolism is primarily controlled at the level of the intestine. If you have any problems with, uh, with uh, accumulation of estrogens or bad estrogens, and I'm talking things like breast cancer or endometrial problems or menstrual cramping or migraine headaches, all of these, or autoimmune diseases, which are also linked to estrogen, all of these should be regarded as digestive health issues issues because it is in the gut and in the liver where estrogen is processed and cleared. And if you're on a prescription drug, you will be burdening your body's ability, you'll be uh, depriving your body or at least impacting your body's ability to clear out excess estrogen, which we'll talk about when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Farmer Mrs. Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. And I uh, don't have any calls here, so we're just going to continue with a bunch of these news stories that I collect. I collect all kinds of stories, and i got to figure out a way to get these out to you. Uh, in addition to the, the few that we read on this program, there's all kinds of good stuff out there that doesn't make the news, but uh, is in the, in the uh, world of scientific journals. That's where, we, that's where I get all these things from. Uh, this one, this next story is from the Mayo Clinic, uh, Mayo Clinic News Network. Three tips to keep burnout at bay, according to the Mayo Clinic, symptoms of stress. Or, or what they're calling burnout can include head and muscle aches, upset stomach, fatigue, anxiety, irritability, lack of focus, overeating, angry outbursts, and so, social withdrawal, according to doc, Dr. Tiffany Casper of the Mayo Clinic. She says there's three ideas or three tips that you can use to keep burnout at bay. Number one, ask yourself what's important now. If you're driving, pay attention to the road. If you're having dinner with a friend, be engaged and be present. And don't play around with your phone. It's not only distracting, it's disrespectful. These, these are all from Dr. Tiffany Casper. What's important now? What am I doing right now that I need to be paying attention to? Even just paying attention to something can relax the body, can activate what, uh, what we call the relaxation nervous system. Just paying attention. Talk about paying attention to your breathing or paying attention to uh, your heart rate or heartbeat or your pulse. Paying attention to parts of the body, rhythms in the body, sounds in the body can activate the relaxation response and these are things that you can use if you're trying to fall asleep or if you're uh, nervous about something, if you're about to do a, a speech, you're public speaking, using these techniques can help relax the body, can activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Acting, asking yourself what's important now, paying attention to what's going on right now. Second thing you could do to keep burnout at bay, according to Dr. Tiffany Casper of the Mayo Clinic, is quantify your commitment. Before you agree to do a commitment, 
recognize that it means giving up some time that can't be replaced and be willing to say no. Quantify your commitment. How important is your commitment? Quantify it. Give it a number from one to 10. If it's a one or a two, maybe it's a commitment you don't want to do. Maybe it's a commitment you don't want to make. And then three, the third tip to keep burnout at bay, according to Dr. Tiffany Casper, make yourself unavailable. I love this one. I have a problem making myself unavailable. Uh, Tiffany, uh, Dr. Casper says, it's okay and important to set aside time for yourself. Schedule it on your calendar. Make a date with yourself. Don't let other responsibilities encroach on that date. Three tips to keep burnout at bay. That's from the Mayo Clinic. From nature cell biology, chronic inflammation leads to an imbalanced blood system and potentially a cancer risk. What is inflammation? We hear this term all the time. Inflammation is a defensive response. It means something is attacking the body. The main source of attack, of course, are things that get into the blood. The main way things get into the blood is through the digestive system. Chronic degenerative disease, which accounts for 80% of our health costs, something like one $1.6 trillion in health costs, 80% of that, about over a trillion dollars, is based in, in, in an inflammatory response, is based on a defensive response. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we're sick because our body's defending itself. We're sick because the body is in chronic protective mode. Tomorrow we're going to talk about fibrosis, and fibrosis is a classic manifestation of a body that's in protective mode. The body's walling itself off or, or protecting itself by building a wall of fiber, whether those fibers show up in the kidney or whether they show up in the heart or whether they show up in the intestine or whether they show up in the skin. This chronic fibrosis, which follows chronic inflammation, is the manifestation of a defensive response, and it leads to a messed up circulatory system, which ultimately will lead to a messed up everything system and there ain't a drug on planet earth and there's no doctor procedure on planet earth that can make a difference in chronic inflammation or chronic fibrosis or chronic dirty blood we got to get this mindset we got to clear up this mindset we got to erase this meme that when we're sick we go to the doctor it doesn't serve us. It serves the doctor. It serves the medical model. It disempowers us and doesn't do us any good, but it makes, uh, it enriches the medical model. This is not in our interest, this mind virus, this meme. We've got to get it out of our heads that the doctor can do anything about it, about chronic inflammation, about chronic attack, about chronic fibrosis, about all of the signs, all of the, uh, all of the uh, precursors to the disease process, but we can address it all ourselves, and it always begins in the digestion digestive system. From the International Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry, antidepressant use increases hip fracture risk among the elderly. elderly. Well, no kidding. If you take a drug, you have now deprived your body of precious resources that it needs to build itself, to repair itself, to grow itself. This is really important and it's never talked about. If you look at the side effect, a side effect profile on the drug that you're taking, and by the way, everybody who's on a prescription drug should be aware of the side effect profile and the adverse reactions, the potential adverse reactions, by looking at what's called the package insert. If you're on a drug, ask your pharmacist. No, don't ask him. Tell him. Insist that you want the package insert. Pharmacists are trained not to let you know this. Doctors get mad. I remember numerous doctors getting mad at me for telling patients about side effects and toxicities and, and giving them the package insert and highlighting all the potential issues that could occur when they took the prescription drug. There's no way a prescription drug cannot cause some kind of negative effect on the body, not necessarily directly with side effects, although those always occur, of course, but because of nutritional deficiencies. Folks, when you take a prescription drug, the body doesn't know that you're being medicated and the doctor is trying to help you. All the body sees is a poison, and this requires the poison detail detoxification system to work harder. The poison detoxification system largely uses minerals like selenium and zinc and copper. That means you're, if you're on a prescription drug, you're very likely, unless you're supplementing, going to be dealing with uh, going to be dealing with zinc deficiency, copper deficiency, and uh, as well as uh, 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 deficiencies in selenium and deficiencies in vitamin C, deficiencies in the amino acid glutamine. 
because glutamine and, and selenium and vitamin C are all involved in phase uh, what, what, liver detoxification, phase one and phase two liver detoxification. That means less B vitamins to build bone. That means less essential fats to build bone. That means less zinc to build bone. And of course, that's why, according to the International Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry, there's a likelihood that you will increase the risk of fractures. This is for, on elderly, a study that was done on elderly patients, but it can happen to anybody. You'll increase the risk of fractures if you are using an antidepressant drug. All right, 844-236-6010, Max in Texas. Hello. Good morning. How you doing, Max? Hello. Doing good. How are you? I'm good. How can we help uh, you this morning? Yes, I I'm a, I have a question. I'm a 47 years old man and I I have I've been having diabetes uh, for a few years and recently I lost some weight about like I would say, you know, 16 pounds, about 20 pounds and but anyway, I noticed I have a kind of bump in uh, the middle of my chest in the bottom, like a, around the bone area, and there is like a kind of uh, round, and it's, it's, it's uh, a smaller... That's not good. Did it just yeah. appear? Did it just recently appear? Yeah, it's or? been uh, appeared for a few months, I noticed, and I keep touching it, and... No, you want to have that looked at, especially if you have a history of diabetes and other health challenges. You definitely want yeah. to know what that is. That could be a tumor. That could be all kinds of things. No, you definitely uh, want to. You want to know what that is. What else do you have going on? Just the di aside from the diabetes, you must have other stuff happening. Digestive uh, issues. Yeah, like you know, my digestive. Like if I eat dry, you know, not you know, but it's, it's, but the thing is, the only thing I didn't want to check with the doctor is because. I don't want to put me in the chemotherapy and all that. Well, it That's may not be. You may not need chemotherapy, but at least you want to know. You want to know what that is. I don't know. It's possible you don't need chemotherapy. It may not be a tumor. I don't know. But you d definitely need to know because that could progress, and then it could be. Then you could have a real problem. So I would be looking at that. I wouldn't be messing around, Max, especially if you but, have a history. But, Go ahead. But, but, but the thing is, like, if if it's something like cancer, what what kind of dietary I should approach it because I don't want to do the chemotherapy. Well, I don't blame you for not wanting to do the chemotherapy. You have to change your life entirely. You're going to have to change the way you eat. You're going to have to change the way you supplement. Make sure you're supplementing. If you have any psychological or emotional stressors, that can depress the immune system. Well, all of that needs to be addressed, and it's not something that I can just tell you on a you know in a, a one minute phone call. If you want, I'll help you personally. If you send a email to Ben at KSCO dot com and put your phone number in, number in there and uh, give me a few days. How, how do you spell your email? Ben at ksco.com, and I'm way behind, so you got to give me some time to get back to you, but I will get back to you. If I haven't gotten back to you, if you're listening out there and I haven't gotten back to you yet, just give me some time, and I'll get back to you. Ben at ksco.com. Max, i got to motivate. We're out of time, my friend. Uh, God bless you. I hope everything works out, and if you want, uh, send me your phone number here, and I'll give you a shout. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We'll continue talking about fibrosis tomorrow, especially as it regards the skin. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.